In 1982, Michael Jackson released the groundbreaking record Thriller to the world, forever changing the music industry. With the help of Quincy Jones, Jackson created a sonic marvel to listen to with both brilliant songwriting and genius audio production, all in analog. At the time, music was still recorded, mixed, and pressed to vinyl in analog, making Michael Jackson's Thriller a truly special purchase for me and is the topic of this video. As a young middle school kid in the early 80s, I listened the crap out of that album, but as I got much older, Thriller and most of the record collection was traded for CDs or cash, and like a fool with no guidance, I went on my merry way. Having spent the last few years rediscovering what good vinyl can sound like and hating myself for not holding on to some extremely rare LPs, it dawned on me that I needed Thriller and Jackson's 1987 follow-up album, Bad. I didn't want to just buy whatever modern edition was sitting on today's store shelves. I wanted the best of the best, and by all accounts, that means tracking down the original Japanese pressings. The only way to get my hands on those was to lube myself up and start looking on Discogs to try my luck. After searching for a while, I found a seller right here in the United States that has a sealed mint edition from a collector that never opened it. I must be in luck. So I ordered it, but not without feeling an aching in my balls. After only a few days, the album arrived in excellent condition and packaged really well. The record itself seems in great shape, while appearing to still be shrink wrapped and in an outer sleeve. Opening the record, I see the LP is protected in a nice anti-static sleeve, common for Japanese pressings from the time. The record looks to be in great condition. Other items include posters and an insert in Japanese, because why wouldn't it be? The included booklet looks like it's been handled before. And here is the legendary poster that's donned so many tweens walls in the 80s. After contacting the seller about this item, it was explained to me that he bought an entire warehouse sale from Peaches when it went out of business. That doesn't quite jive with the audiophile collector description in the advertisement. The more I look over the items here, the more I start to notice something dreadful. There is foxing all over it and it smells moldy. Plus, there are noticeable streaks inside the gatefold indicating it had been wiped down. Having worked in record stores in the late 80s, I can tell this record was re-shrink wrapped by Peaches and marked as new. Something that was done quite often back then on used records that looked new. Unfortunately, it's impossible to know if the mold was a result of dampness penetrating the non-factory shrink wrap or if the record was stored in extremely poor conditions. Either way, this is neither mint nor worth the selling price. I have several older used records in my collection that are far superior to this that I picked up used for under $20. I'm extremely annoyed by this, but we'll scrub the LP and test it anyway since it actually looks okay. I went back and forth with the reseller on this and asked how he wanted to handle it. He offered a tiny refund and we moved on. I wanted to plug his Discog store, but there was no way I could after this experience. About a day after I ordered Thriller, I accidentally ordered a used edition of the 1987 Japanese pressing of Bad from a German seller. The record was rated as Very Good Plus, so I decided to leave the order in place and take a chance. Over a week later, Bad arrived via DHL. By this time, Thriller had been sitting here waiting to be cleaned and tested along with Bad. The packaging was good and it arrived in excellent condition. Since the ad already said there was foxing on the release, I was expecting a few spots here or there. Upon opening the record and examining it, the foxing is all over it and the mold smell is making my eyes burn and my throat all scratchy. Like with Thriller, I bought this for the audiophile listening experience of the record, not the packaging, but so far, I'm not having good luck at all with Discogs. Taking a look at the record, my heart completely sank as there are massive scratches across the entire length of each side. As far as I'm concerned, this record is trash and I need to contact the seller about this. Now, check out this scratch that runs right through to the other side of the label. Buying records on Discogs is extremely precarious. 
When the seller said there was foxing, they weren't kidding. You know, it's a real shame that most all classic vintage records are likely to suffer a fate such as this. After reaching out to the seller with photos of the record, they were very gracious to send me another record at no charge. The seller explained that a lot of people handle their stock and mistakes can happen. In exchange for the replacement record, I offered to give them a quick plug here. They have locations in Germany and Japan. The funny thing about this purchase is it was a Japanese import shipped from Germany to America. I just thought that it's funny how something so small can make its way around the world. Before I consider dropping the needle, every record is subjected to my dual spin clean wash system with Turgital based cleaner. This is the lowest cost, highest performance method I have discovered over the last few years and gives the best results of all the methods I've tested. Perfecto! With that out of the way, let's get to testing. Straight off, I can tell you the listening experience of the original analog pressing of Michael Jackson's Thriller exceeds my expectations. Not only does every intricate sound jump out of the groove so cleanly and precisely, there's an impressive level of three-dimensionality I don't often experience on a lot of modern records, and especially the so-called digital remasters. Looking at the 24-bit, 192kHz digital capture direct from the vinyl, you can see just how dynamic the recording really is. There is a ton of information there, and it's utilizing every ounce of what a record pressing is capable of. If we take a quick look at the MoFi Super Audio CD release from 2022, we can see it's more beefed up in terms of fidelity, probably due to the different engineer and likely for more loudness. The Super Audio CD exceeds 192kHz and therefore is packed with tons of dead wasted space. Otherwise, the spectrum would look like this and there's nothing to show. Okay, so you're telling yourself these measurements don't mean much, but let's take a look at the 2022 release of the Thriller 40th Anniversary CD. It's completely crushed. This might be good for digital streaming or in your car, but if you play this in your home audio system, your pet monkey will pack its bags and move out. The dynamic range scan tells us even more. Anything above 10 these days is pretty good. The Thriller LP comes in at a remarkable level of 13. The MoFi Super Audio CD is also at a very respectable 13. And the 40th Anniversary CD? A dynamic range of 8 is not great. During the very first playthrough, I noticed very few clicks or pops, and the surface noise was nearly non-existent. The following day, I played it again and noticed that it was dead silent with zero clicks or pops and no audible background noise at all. That was at even louder volumes. I never heard vinyl that clean before. Even though the Super Audio CD could be a contender for the superior audio format, I am thrilled to have the recorded material as close to and as directly from the creator as possible. And this record is it. The 1987 Japanese pressing of Michael Jackson's Bad has slightly more impressive results, despite being used and scratched. The dynamic range measurement comes in at 14, while the 25th anniversary CD measures at a uh, disappointing 6. Let's compare waveforms. Above we have the vinyl rip and below is the audio CD. You can see how badly crushed the audio CD is compared to the vinyl pressing. These classic Michael Jackson LPs are hard to find and really expensive. But now that I have them, I do feel pretty good about it. The highs are crisp and clear, the mid-range is warm and natural, and bass is tight and direct without muddiness or booming. These rare original Japanese press thriller and bad records exceeded my expectations and have proven to me that original material can seriously beat the pants off modern releases. Whether you are a fan of Jackson's or not, you owe it to yourself to at the very least listen to Thriller in an audiophile format on a proper sound system. If you find this kind of record analysis interesting or useful, let me know in the comments. I have several more planned and your subs and likes will help me get those done. Thanks for watching.